Hello folks, I'm Ed Overstreet. Welcome to the Night Sky Imaging YouTube channel. Uh, in the last video I did, I uh, took uh, uh, data that I had uh, gathered in the uh, Cone Nebula and uh, we processed uh, the narrowband data in the uh, uh, with the software Deep Sky Stacker. And so now we're going to take that same data and we're going to uh, uh, create a uh, Hubble palette uh, image out of the narrowband HA, S2, and O3. And in Photoshop, we're going to map the HA channel, which is by far uh, the channel that has the most data. But we're going to map that uh, in the green channel and we're going to map the S2 in the red and the O3 in the blue channel. Um, we'll see what we get and we're going to use two different uh, approaches or techniques in Photoshop to arrive hopefully at the same um, visual conclusion but we'll find out. Uh, I do have a preference uh, to which one I use and uh, as a point of reference when I first started out processing uh, uh, narrow band and LRGB uh, images for that matter. Uh, the only software I knew how to use was Photoshop and uh, so I had to find Deep Sky Stacker and figure out how to do that and once I had uh, Deep Sky Stacker uh, compiling my data into uh, HAS2 and, and O3 I was able to uh, uh, put those uh, monochrome images together images together for a color image and play around with the colors and have some fun so that's what we're going to do in this video and um, so I, I will I will say this too that I don't use Photoshop anymore to do any of this I'm um, I, I really do like the software Pix Insight and uh, in fact uh, I, I don't think I could uh, do this without Pix Insight uh, uh, now it, it would drive me nuts uh, trying to uh, uh, get it the way I really like it. Pix Insight's just awesome software. It's got a learning curve and I bought it and it set uh, unused for a while while I tried to watch tutorials and try to figure it out. And there weren't that many tutorials uh, six or seven years ago on, on the software. But at any rate, uh, so here we go. Let's um, go to me share my screen and then we'll take you over to uh, Photoshop which I opened up and uh, you should be there now and let's go over to uh, the directory that has the three files from deep deep side the folder deep sky stacker and let's open those up by the way these are really large files they're uh, around 125 megabyte in size so uh, you'll not need to do this, but I'm on a slow processing machine, and in the name of of uh, making this a fairly fast video, I don't want to be slowed down with the uh, spinning uh, ball, so I'm going to change the size of all three of these uh, to make the images a little more workable. So I'm going to go to Image mode and I want to make sure they're RGB right away so we just converted HA to RGB if we don't do that we will not have color no matter what we do uh, and then I'm going to uh, image and image size uh, select that and uh, I want this to be 15 inches by well it's going to be 1134 and uh, I just changed the 15. When these are linked, they'll automatically create the correct inches in height. But I do want 240 DPI. So I'm going to collect, save that by OK. I have a smaller file. And I went from 125 to 56 megabytes. And so let's go to the O3. Let's go to image, mode. RGB, image, image size, changes to 15 by 1134 and 240 pixels. And I'm going to hit the command or control and the plus key 
and get it bigger. Are you? And then we're going to go to the sulfur channel and mode RGB. Image size. We're back to 15 by 1134, and we're at uh, 240 pixels. So we're good to go. Command and or control if you're using Windows I'm using a Mac plus and so there are our three images um, I'm going to just double click on this and change it to HA and uh, double click on this I really don't need to do these three but I'm gonna go ahead and O3 and double click on this background and give this the S to so we have our hydrogen sulfur oxygen all up here so let's start by uh, taking this image from a linear to a nonlinear state and we're going to stretch this and try to find the data and we're going to try to make the data fairly similar from image to image. Uh, so it's sort of the uh, equivalent in PixInsight of doing a linear fit. Uh, so it's subjective, but that's our goal number one. So um, this becomes a cumbersome file, and that was one of the reasons why I wanted to reduce its size, because it's going to get bigger quick and because I'm going to be creating a lot of layers as we go through this process. Um, that way if I need to back up and redo one of those layers I can. So first thing we want to do is make a duplicate layer of this one over here to the right and to do that I'm going to hit on a Mac hit the command key and on Windows hit the control and from now on uh, I'm going to be using just command because I'm a Mac user, but where I say command, you would be using the control key on Windows. So I'm going to hit uh, command L, well I'm going to hit command J, and command J will duplicate this image. So I have a copy of the HA data. Now I'm going to hit command C, uh, command L, and I bring up the levels channel. When I'm finished using that, I'm going to bring up Command M, as in Mike, and that will bring up the Curves channel. Now, you can also go up to Image, Adjustments, and go to Levels, which is Command L, or Curves, and the hotkey is Command M. So we're going to be using these two. You can either use the hotkey, Command and or Control L, Command or Control M, or you can come up here and bring them up uh, from the menu. So we made a duplicate copy. Let's go to Command L and drag this center uh, carrot to the left about halfway. That's okay. We're going to create a duplicate layer. That's Command J. We're going to hit Command L again for levels. We're going to slide this about halfway. We're going to create a duplicate layer. We're going to do another levels, Command L. And we're going to move this about halfway. And from now on, we'll use levels for just the block point. Uh, we've gotten started, but from now on, we will be using levels uh, as we alternate back and forth with curves but uh, we'll be using levels primarily just to adjust the black point. So now we're going to do another control J for a duplicate layer and we're going to do command L for levels and we're going to take the black point all the way over. Okay and then we're going to go to command J create an alternate I mean a new layer and then command M and we're going to bring this up
and we're affecting the pixels that are in the histogram from um, let me just start all over again uh, this is the linear slope and we're going to take these pixels and put an anchor point almost in the center and just kind of move it to the left that may be a little bit too much about there and we do this incrementally so that we don't do artifacts you can't do it all at once and so we're going to create a duplicate layer we're going to bring up levels and we're going to move this slider over to where this histogram starts to go up with our black point we're going to go create another layer alternate I mean command or control J and then we're going to go command M for curves and we're going to bring this back up at some more we're going to create a new layer alternate I mean command or control J and we're going to go command or control L for our levels bring this over a tad but our histograms getting nice and uh, fat and uh, that's what we're that's what we want click OK and we're going to create a duplicate layer we're going to bring up command or control M and we're going to do this again bring this down some and we're going to go back to a duplicate layer command or control L not much more black point to adjust I just want to make sure we're not clipping any data and we're going to create a new layer command or control J and we're going to go back to command or control L I uh, mean okay, command or control M we want curves our black point pretty good let's set an anchor about here and let's give it just a little bit more of a stretch not much more than that and we're done okay I could back out some of these layers if I thought that uh, I needed to or if I had overdone it so uh, I'm going to leave it alone for right now and then when I'm finished doing all three of them uh, I'll flatten these layers but uh, as you can see we have 11 layers uh, actually 12 we have a copy no 11 11 layers um, not including the original so let's go to our oxygen and we want to make a duplicate layer to start out let's go to command or control L let's go about halfway and stop create a duplicate layer command or control L halfway and stop okay duplicate layer command or control L let's bring our black point over and halfway command or control we're going to do this again duplicate layer back to levels Get over back point's going to move okay good and so there's not a lot of oxygen data but we're going to bring out uh, as much as we can so now we're going to go to a new layer and command M and we're going to uh, bring this over to about there I usually don't adjust the black point but it's pretty easy to do there oops and we want to bring this down some I want I want to increase the uh, slope of the curve inside this histogram from um, I put it where it was just drag these off to the side this is how well this is how we started off so I just kind of brought this over a little bit 
then I put an anchor and then I want to just kind of bring this up inside here okay command or control J to create a new layer let's do curves again command or control M and let's do an anchor okay command or con control J for a new layer command and control L for curves let's set our black point and command and or control J for a new layer let's go back to curves command or control M and we're getting a nice fat histogram because we don't have a lot of 03 here you just don't have it don't have it you don't have it You know, you could stretch the dickens out of this and we're going to stop probably close to there. Let's go back to a new layer, Command or Control J, Command L. Let's reset our black point. Let's create a new layer. It is so important that this is all done incrementally a little at a time um, don't get in a hurry you'll you'll have regrets later and you'll end up redoing it so it's just best to take your time the first time you you go through this so let's create a duplicate layer and let's go back to our curves commander control M uh, I think we're done we're going to do another slight Hmm. that's it okay that's all the oxygen we're going to have there's our hydrogen here's our oxygen and let's take a look at sulfur let's create a duplicate layer Con command and or control J and let's pull up our uh, command L curves our levels drag about halfway and let's create a duplicate layer command L halfway duplicate layer command L duplicate layer well it didn't create it duplicate layer command L duplicate layer command L duplicate layer command L I'm watching my histogram more and I'm looking at the image duplicate layer control L I'm just watching this in, in, this histogram move to the right and get fatter black point midtones duplicate layer let's go to curves control M move our black point slightly good duplicate layer control M slightly again good duplicate layer control L set the black point duplicate layer control M good duplicate layer control M good duplicate layer control L duplicate layer Control M, this will be the last. Oh, well, okay. It's probably good I did this. Do you see? I'm going to bring this way up. 
Do you see these spaces between these lines? That's a good sign I've clipped data on the darks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel this. I'm going to go over here and delete this layer. I'm going to delete this layer and I'm going to start right here. Actually, let's delete that layer. All right, let's go back here and let's commit. Let's go to command and con let's create a new layer now. Okay, let's go command or control M. And we haven't clipped anything yet. Okay, let's try to keep from doing that. And command or control J and then command M. We are clipping some there. No, those are the lines. Okay, we're pretty good. All right, there's our sulfur, there's our O3, and there's our HA. So, I wish I could lift more luminosity of O3 here, but I, I, I can't get it out. I, I just won't be able to do it. Um, it's just not there. And if it's not there, I'll tell you what, let's do another, hmm, let's do another uh, duplicate layer, control M, just a little more. I'm going to regret it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and flatten this layer before I regret it. Layer, flatten. Sulfur, layer, flatten, hydrogen, uh, layer, flatten. Okay, now um, there's two ways we can go about doing this. And so what I'm going to do, first I want to save this uh, so that I can come back and use this again to show you another way to do it. So let's go to um, File, Save As, and we'll just save it inside this DSS directory and we'll just call this um, oh, number oops. Second, oh, I can't keep my hands on the right key. <laughs> All right, so we're going to save our hydrogen there. And we're going to go to our oxygen. It should find the same channel. There. And our same directory, but it didn't. Save as. All right, so we've stretched it. Now, uh, let's. Um, Let's let's approach this the conventional way, and what we're going to do is uh, let me make sure I know what the image size is. So the image size is 15 by 11, 342, and 240. All right, I want to create a new uh, directory. I mean a new uh, uh, layer. And I want it to be white, RGB. I want it to be 15 by 11, 342, and 16-bit. So let's create it. And uh, I'm just going to call this, well, we're not going to change the name. We'll try, try it down here, SHO. All right. Now we're going to click on the channels. 
So we have a red channel, green channel, and the blue channel. And we're going to turn them off right for right now. Well, we got the red channel. One of them has to stay open. So what we're going to do now, we need sulfur to put the sulfur into the red channel. So we're going to look for sulfur here. And you can go Command or Control A, which is Select All. That's Command or Control A. So you don't, you can, you can do this or hit Command A or Control A if you're on a Windows machine. Then you can go to Copy, which is Command or Control C. So we'll just take Copy. And then we're going to uh, click on the red channel here, and we're going to go paste. And so we've pasted the sulfur data into this red channel. So we're going to go to the green channel, and we'll bring our hydrogen alpha data. We're going to go to select all, edit copy or command or control C then we're going to go to our new file and we're going to we're in the green and we're going to go edit paste so now we've pasted the uh, hydrogen alpha we've mapped that into the green channel now all we have left is the oxygen so we're going to go to the oxygen we're going to select it all command or control A Command or Control C to copy it, and then Command or Control V. Well, let's get there. Command or Control V to paste it, and we're going to go ahead and paste it. So when we turn these on, we have the startings, if you will, of our uh, Hubble palette, albeit pretty, pretty dark. And uh, but before we go any further, let's go back to layers. Let's create uh, a duplicate layer, and let's go to image adjustment curves, and let's go ahead and uh, bring this up some. Not a lot, but about there. Okay. So before we leave Photoshop, uh, I would normally, uh, we got several different things we're going to do, but one of them was we need to crop this bottom right down here at the very bottom. We've got uh, uh, where the stacking created uh, a, a mess. We want to crop that thin layer out. I think we're okay. Uh, everywhere else but that would need to be cropped out um, I do recognize that but uh, we're going to leave it uncropped knowing it needs to be done uh, because I may have to use the same sizes again and uh, uh, if I crop it then I'm in trouble so that's a permanent uh, when you crop it that's permanent so I'm going to avoid doing any of those geographic or geometry changes to it. Um, okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Selective Color and we're going to go up to Image and under Adjustments we're going to go down to Selective Color and we're going to go to the greens, open up the greens and we're going to take the cyan and we're going to drag the cyan all the way down to minus 100. And we're going to take the magenta and we're going to take that down to around minus 25. We do that to taste. Say, just get it the way you like it. All right, and then we're going to the yellow channel. And we're going to do the same thing with cyan. We're going to take that down to minus 100 but this time we're going to take the magenta up to about 35 40 
Again, where, wherever you like it, too far. Let's see, maybe there. I'm going to go to, say, 25. Uh, now we're going to go to the cyan channel, and we're finished with this. And we're going to take the yellows to minus 100. Yellows go to minus 100. We're going to be bringing out the blues, and we're going to take the magenta, and we're going to bring that uh, down to minus, oh, 80, 85. And I'm doing, I'm moving this kind of to my taste. Okay. All right, I'm going to leave it about there. Uh, again, this is all very very subjective and uh, I'm gonna click OK I'm gonna flatten the image layer flatten probably should have just left that but I'm gonna go ahead and commit a duplicate layer uh, now I'm gonna delete that I'm gonna do an adjustment layer I'm gonna go down here and do a new adjustment layer down here at the bottom in the center uh, I have a globe I'm gonna click on that and uh, I'm going to um, go up to hue and saturation and I'm going to go to the uh, magentas and I'm going to drag that all the way the saturation I'm going to remove the magenta stars I'm going to drag the saturation all the way to the left to get the magenta away from the stars which that did as you can see uh, I'm going I'm to take the command or control plus the plus sign uh, and I'm going to hit command plus and I'll uh, move the slider back and you can see the magenta ring around the stars well I'm going to move it back to remove that and then I'm going to take the command or control minus key and put this back I am finished uh, with Photoshop so I'm going to go to layer flatten I'm going to export this file export as and I'm going to export as a PNG file it's probably already set up that way it is and let's save that to let's export let's say that to uh, DSS first proce processing technique we'll save it right there alright now we're going to open up Lightroom and give me a second you don't have to do this uh, if you don't have Lightroom uh, just don't worry about it you can work on noise reduction and all that other I gotta process these wrestling pictures I'm gonna go up to library I'm gonna go to import and I'm gonna go down to uh, my Astro channel we gotta find oh here's the cone oh there's my image um, so it already picked it up so let's pick up my image and import okay let's go to develop up here at the top right and let's take uh, highlights down a little bit uh, let's take our contrast up a little bit let's take uh, hold down the uh, option key and grab this and bring this up to you see your first pixel and let it go you just set your white point 
hold down your option or your control and take your dark point and bring it down to you see slide it down to you see some darks there you go see them right here so you see your first pixels and let it go and you just let your back point black point let's bring the clarity up some you see the clarity adds a lot of mid-tone sharp sharpening it's got that effect I'm not going to fool with saturation but you can if you feel the need to you might want to desaturate it some vibrance doesn't hurt to give it a pop then this is where you can do some selective coloring if you don't have uh, Topaz or Vivesa in Nick software you can come down here and and you can uh, use affect the luminance the saturation or the hue of each of these of each of these pixels and if you want to know if you just go over here and kind of um, take on saturation for example and see this little whatchamacallit right here click on that and then when you come over here and hover over here let me when you hover over here you can see the slider change and you can move it up or down move your mouse up or down and you can just affect those pixels so I'm taking the yellow pixels and I'm just working on those and you can see the yellow pixels pixels uh, being affected in this image and all I did was put this over the yellow pixels hold my mouse down and slide it up some okay uh, I'm gonna go to luminance click on this and I'm gonna go back here and click on my whatchamacallit and drop it just a little bit I'm gonna go back to saturation click on this again I'll go to my blues you pick it up when you sometimes you don't grab it the first time when you do you'll see a plus sign plus that so let's find a good place where there's good blue color about right here we're good so I'm going to make this get rich so I'm moving it up or down and that's the saturation part so we're saturation saturating it a little bit now not much we went up about eight we're going to go to luminance same place and we're going to brighten it up a little bit uh, it's just where you can do some selective changing and the uh, background is bugging me some so I'm going to go to saturation click on this again and go to the background and just drop it down actually I don't want saturation I want luminance and I want to make sure I got that picked I don't and I want to drop the background down just a little bit and it'll drop it down everywhere okay let's move down I want to go down here to um, let me find it enable remove chromatic aberration I want to make sure that's checked that's all all right let's go to our noise reduction and let's uh, zoom in a little bit so I'm going to go up here and click on fill let's go a little more one to one and let's bring our noise slider up some some more uh, Lightroom has a tremendous noise reduction algorithm without losing your detail. Now I don't recommend ever going over 60 but in fact we're going to come down. You can preserve your detail, bring your color noise up and preserve your detail with your color noise let's, 
Checkpoint's down, so... Okay. Well, folks, uh, this is a way to process this image and uh, and you're done so with that being said let's go back into Photoshop and uh, what I'm going to do is get rid of this no point in saving it and uh, we've got these three already uh, checked so I'm going to go through the second actually we've already uh, messed these up so I'm gonna have to close these out and we're gonna open up the HA in uh, the uh, second processing technique and so okay now uh, these are our three images that are pretty much uh, in the same, they're the same uh, nonlinear images we worked on uh, just a few minutes ago. So we're going to do things a little differently though. I'm going to go to my, hyd my hydrogen alpha and I'm going to call this the, uh, change this to the HA layer. I also call it the HS layer which is fine but it bothers me uh, and we're going to take um, the O3 we're going to go select all edit copy and we're going to go back and click on our HA and what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the oxygen I'm going to paste it in the HA channel so I'm going to go edit paste and now we have the oxygen on top of the uh, hydrogen alpha. So we're going to call this O3. So if I take this off, if I click this eyeball, I'm looking at the hydrogen alpha. I click this. I'm only looking at the oxygen. I'm not looking at the oxygen and the hydrogen. I can turn this off. So these are independent images of each other. All right, we need the sulfur, so let's go over to the sulfur. Select all. We want to copy. And we want to go back to our hydrogen uh, alpha channel, and we're going to paste. And we're going to call this S2. OK. Now, I'm going to go through what I, this process. Uh, I'm 99% sure that all these images are RGB. Yeah, but I wanted to double check. Now, I'm going to go through this process. Uh, it's going to be hard to explain. It's a fast moving sort of process. So you just have to rewatch the video and stop it and start it. Uh, or, or you can get kind of lost in it if you're not careful. So the very first thing that I'm going to do under the S3 channel is I'm going to create a adjustment layer and it's going to be a hue and saturation adjustment layer. So I'm going to go down to this center uh, icon and click on that and bring up hue saturation. Then I'm going to click on colorize and I'm going to take the hue slider. Now I'm working in the S2 channel. So I'm going to take the hue slider and I'm going to bring it all the way. This is my red channel all the way over to the right. And I'm going to take uh, saturation and I'm bring it all the way down. I mean all the way over to the right. And I'm going to take the, the lightness and I'm going to bring it down to minus 50. Can't see the numbers up there. About now is get close. Okay. So the first thing I did 
was I clicked on the top layer, layer. I went down and created a hue saturation layer. I colorized it. I took the hue all the way to the far right. I took the saturation all the way to the far right. And I took the lightness down to minus 50. This is important. Now I'm going to go back to this layer. I'm going to right click on it. And I'm going to go down and create a clipping mask. So now I have a clipping mask and the way I can tell is that there's an arrow pointing down to the sulfur channel. So that means I can make changes up here and the changes won't affect the other two channels. So then I'm going to go to the sulfur 2 click on this and I'm going to go up to where it says blend well it's blending mode under normal and I'm going to go down to screen mode right here and click on screen mode so there's my red channel now I'm going to do the same thing by going down to the oxygen I'm going to go down and create a hue saturation layer and I'm going to colorize it oxygen is blue so I'm going to go about to 250 225 maybe let's try 230 I'm going to saturate all the way over to 100 percent I'm going to take this down to minus 50 I'm going to close enough and uh, whoops I wanted to uncheck sulfur 2 so I brought this down to minus 50 and I'm going to create a hue saturation mask, I mean a clipping mask. Why did I say that? And then uh, we're going to go down to sulfur 2 and we're going to go up to the blending mode and create the screen mode, blending mode. So now we have our uh, blue channel. I'm going to uncheck that. Now we're working on our hydrogen alpha. I'm going to go down to Hue Saturation, Colorize. We're going to work on green, so I'm going to go back to 110. Saturate it 100%. Come down to about minus 60 because we have so much hydrogen in this. So we're going to go down to about minus 60. We're going to create a clipping mask. We're going to go down to hydrogen alpha and we'll also do the screen mode although you'll not see the major changes. So now we have our, we're going to turn all these eyes on and now we have all three channels and uh, we're able to uh, do some interesting things. And this is probably my favorite way in Photoshop to uh, bring out the uh, data in the uh, Hubble palette. Um, both work fine. I think this is my favorite. I'm going to also go down here to the hydrogen. I'm going to click on hydrogen. Make sure all of these are selected, but I'm going to click hydrogen. I'm going to go down to the cur uh, to the um, adjustment layer. I'm going to go select curves. I'm going to click on O3. I'm going to go down and create a curves layer for this as well. I'm going to go up to the O, the S2 and create a curves layer. Now, when you create a new adjustment layer, it automatically adds, this curves layer automatically becomes a clipping layer. So if I adjust uh, curves, it's only going to affect sulfur. This curve will only affect uh, the oxygen and this curve will only affect the hydrogen alpha. So um, I might want to play around with curves and say well let's um, let's move this up or down or let's do an S curve. Let's go back to our um, hue saturation and let's lower our saturation or let's lower our hue or let's change the lightness so you can see where you can have some selective uh, control over this and 
and it, which is really why I, I, I like this method is, is I can uh, manipulate the curves for each layer and I haven't uh, really made any changes of any consequence to the to the major layer they're still the, uh, uh, they're still monochrome looking RGB image RGB layers so uh, it's all non-destructive uh, if you will whereas before those changes I made they're done once I they're done so I can save this as a PSD file and come back and work on them later if I, uh, later if I want to uh, make changes to this um, but let's go ahead and put it in the same uh, put it in the same uh, category or mode or the same condition as we put the other image in let's uh, flatten this layer let's create a duplicate uh, another uh, adjustment layer hue saturation let's take the magenta and let's get rid of the magenta stars which we need to do and let's flatten this layer uh, we can also try to go to image adjustment selective color and we can look at taking our um, green channel and uh, working with our uh, cyan by moving that down to like uh, say there in our magenta let's go to about minus 25 then let's pull in our uh, yellows and let's take our cyan again back down to minus 100 and our magenta let's go up to about 35 30 up uh, let's go back and get it image if you happen to do what I just did and close it out you can always go back and get it and now we want to do our cyan and we want to take our yellows this time down to minus 100 no we don't too much I mean minus 70 and our magenta's down to minus this is this image is going to be a little different uh, we really brought out the oxygen which uh, it's kind of phony because it's really I didn't really see it there um, let's go to um, spring up a curves layer and let's create another S curve not let uh, get rid of it drag it off Uh, what I should have done, I didn't do, but what I should have done was uh, left all the layers so I could go back to my hue saturation and my curves um, before I flattened uh, the image. And I could still make some changes to this. But uh, you get the idea of uh, using clipping mask in order to... Uh, uh, create a Hubble palette and uh, so this image you can also save as a PNG take it into Lightroom if you happen to have it and you can make some selective changes to the colors uh, pretty easily over there as well as apply some noise reduction if you don't have Lightroom you can go up to filter noise uh, reduce noise and uh, you can bring up your image and it's going to come up sooner or later oh it won't come up because I'm on this layer we got to flatten it then you can go up to filter uh, noise reduce noise and you can let's go here Uh, 
I don't like the way that works. But you do have a noise reduction tool in Photoshop if you don't have uh, it anywhere else. So, okay, folks, uh, that pretty much sums up Photoshop creating a Hubble picture uh, using uh, mapping the green uh, with uh, hydrogen alpha, the red with sulfur 2, and the blue with oxygen uh, 3. I will catch you on the next video. hope this is helpful and catch you on next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I appreciate it.